Hi guys, so I made some beautiful platters today and it just it got me to thinking about my career as a chef and I've made a lot of beautiful platters but I think this food was definitely my first love and my first art. Um, I've always expressed myself through food and the beauty of the colors of produce and plating and putting it all together and um, even that there's like a butternut sa uh, butternut squash salad and but look at this fruit tray look at all the gorgeous colors on there and to me that's it translates to painting and art and, and food is art and food is love and so it's a little bittersweet to think about leaving my career as a chef and I've had my own chef company um, for a long time 16 years or so but I am trying to transition full-time into art um, it's easier on my body I've been doing uh, catering for a long time and chefing and I'm just physically ready to be done with it I I'll never stop cooking but so, yeah, it's um, it's interesting. <laughs> I'm scared, and I'm excited, and I just am hoping um, for the best of the best to happen. And so I just put all I can really do is be genuine, and that is one thing I've noticed. Um, and I'm just gonna give this advice to you as a businesswoman if you want to make any career your career. Um, over the years, I've found that genuine sells. And what I mean by that is something that's truly yours f from the heart. I mean, it has to be a good product too. Obviously, you're not going to just sell crap and people are going to love it. But in general, you know, there's fads that come and go, but something that's really, really and truly yours and very genuine and comes from a open and heartfelt place, it usually um, will sell because people can feel that energy. And um, that's how I make my food and that's how I make my art. So, um, you know, here's to the best of my future as um, I try to go full-time with my art and someone posted this on Facebook the other day and I thought it was really telling you know you don't have to have money to support an artist just share share their work share their links and watch them grow naturally because someone out there will have money to buy paintings and sometimes it's just a matter of connecting people together so and putting my art out in front of as many people as possible and so that's what I'm just trying to do now and um, look how many layers I put in this cup you guys so I'm gonna show you this is gonna be a wandering straight pour from a height so I literally put all of those layers in the cup and then I just did a straight war. Look how far up I am. Like, it's hard to tell with the camera, but. Now, had I not um, decided to do a straight war at the last minute, that cup would have made amazing rings because I put so many different layers of colors in there. I think Mina Villegas would call this one of her fantasy pours because you see how I do a straight pour and then I ring it and then I do a straight pour and I ring it. And then now around the outside I'm going to do a little traveling ring pour. So I just use the same color pattern and decided to just move the cup in a different way. So this shows you like all of the different effects that you can get just by the way that you move your cup because I didn't I didn't put any more paint in that cup, you guys. That's the exact same cup. 
I just did a dirty pour and then I went back towards the left of the canvas and then I outlined the dirty pour with a traveling ring pour. And look at the difference in the effects and the only thing I changed was the movement of the cup. It's exactly the same layering and everything. So that just tells you, <laughs> it really does make a difference how you move your hands. And um, I know people get really hung up on what colors did you use? And you know, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, colors one way or another, whether you used a certain color or not, it just doesn't make or break your painting. What makes or breaks your painting is consistency first and foremost. And I think that's um, something that a lot of new people don't quite understand. But consistency is the first thing. And um, the second thing that makes or breaks your pores, I think, is um, practice knowing your paints, knowing how they react with each other, understanding you don't need silicone to make cells, and people are always saying that to me, oh, you know, you had to have used silicone, you had to, <laughs> and I'm like, no, I swear, I barely, rarely ever use silicone because I know how my paints work together, so I don't have to, but this is kind of a cool um, painting, and I'm not sure where I'm going with it when I first started. I thought I just wanted to use up some, basically some leftover paints and, um, you know, not a huge fan of, like, I love green. It's very fresh. It's very spring and spring always makes me think of growth and new growth and livelihood and, um, it, of course, it's associated with money and freshness and rain and flowers and um, leprechauns, <laughs> you know, green is, um, you know, envy and there's a lot of associations with green. Um, and I do love it, but there's not, I have trouble mixing a lot of things with green, so blue is a safe one. Blue and white and yellow, all very safe to mix with green, so. I decide on this one, this is a 10 by 20 canvas, guys, and I decide I'm gonna do a little negative space. So I decided to dump most of the paint off the bottom and leave those beautiful rings around those lines from the ring pour around the top it's very very pretty and very fresh painting now i believe this one has the primary elements in it so i probably won't be able to do a high gloss varnish although that would actually be the perfect varnish for this painting but I haven't found a solution yet to isolating, uh, to putting an isolation coat over the painting because what happens when I use that high gloss varnish, the primary elements bleed into that varnish and, and I haven't figured out how to get that to stop. So um, someone told me they thought a solution, but I, I've already tried spraying um, a coat of varnish over the top of it first to kind of seal it. So look, in the comment section, if you guys have an idea for me, um, something that would totally seal that painting before I varnished it, let me know, because I really love that high gloss varnish and I would really love to do it. Um, so guys, uh, I want to say thank you so much to all my supporters and I appreciate each and every one of you. There's a link in my description box if you'd like to support my channel or you can visit Heather Mater Art 
if you'd like to make it your own one of these paintings you can make your own this one I had I don't have listed yet if you want in my shop but if you are interested you can always contact me by uh, email which is in my description box as well and uh, yeah I just decided to freshen up the white space on this so I just take that's just regular white paint there's nothing special about it and I just take it and fill in some of the blanks there. The canvas that number one didn't have anything on it, I did not put a base coat. And number two, if there's any drips of paint that I'm not loving, I decided to cover those up. So I'm sorry for the little camera sway, you guys. <laughs> it looks like maybe my tripod wasn't completely stable and it just has a little sway to it every time I bump the table so oh, tech I think that's considered a technical difficulty <laughs> so yeah this is a very fresh and vibrant looking painting with all of the blues and the metallic colors just sort of melding together you, I like this one. This was like, if you don't like a lot of cells, this would be the perfect painting for you. Um, and I love how that ring pour added so much interest as a contrast to the straight pour that I did. <laughs> I'm trying to get a little smoothing going on there but I don't want to bring out any of the any of the green that I had covered up in that little corner right there so look how pretty so this is under the lights where you can really see all the shimmering qualities of the paints oh, I love that little part right there it's so pretty and the green that you know, if you've never tried Golden's Green Gold, oh my gosh, it's so addicting. It's so gorgeous. I just love that color. See how the blue really pops right there. And look, all of the hundreds and hundreds of lines from the traveling ring pour. And then look at the straight pour. Oh my gosh, look at all those greens just melding together and then they marry into the traveling ring pour. It's a very fresh and vibrant looking painting and I really, I keep using that but it just <laughs> reminds me of, I don't know, maybe even minty like minty freshness or something but sorry about that you guys <laughs> my camera work was not the best this day but here's some close-ups for you to see some still shots this is pretty simple negative space it's kind of elegant looking very vibrant. I love that right there. And there's the whole thing, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed sharing this with you. Thank you so much, and I can't wait to make more art videos for you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit all notifications so I can make more art videos just for you.